In today's show, we'll be discussing the U.S. government moving $922 million worth of seized Bitcoin after the price broke $60,000. We'll also be discussing spot Bitcoin ETFs record new all-time high of $680 million as the Bitcoin bull run gathers pace. That's right. Also, this just in breaking news, BlackRock's spot Bitcoin ETF to start trading in Brazil officially tomorrow. Let's go. Also, Wells Fargo and Bank of America's Merrill are offering spot Bitcoin ETF to their wealth clients. Very interesting. We'll also be discussing Bitcoin billionaire Jeff Bezos. That's right. Did he enter the Bitcoin billionaire club? We'll be discussing this, as well as venture capitalist Dan Tapiero predicts Bitcoin will explode by up to 230% this year. I'll be sharing his outlook as well as his timeline. We'll also be discussing the Bitcoin price can soar to a quarter million dollars per coin a lot sooner than many expect, according to the Bitwise CEO. We'll also be discussing a crypto expert revealing why Bitcoin will rise to $400,000 per coin. I'll be sharing this timeline. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto crypto market, all this, plus so much more in today's show. I want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, which is Prime XBT. If you're looking for a great international crypto exchange, Look no further, especially if you're based outside of the U.S. They have very easy, uh, easy onboarding. You can trade crypto futures, global markets, as well as copy the expert traders. They have fantastic support, 1 million plus registered users, 170,000 plus daily trades, and currently serving 152 countries. Checking out the markets here, there are over 30 crypto future pairs plus other assets, as you can see on your screen, such as Forex, gold, oil, the S&P. NASDAQ, and so on. And one of my favorite features is their low fees. They also support both cross and isolated margin, and the range of leverage is impressive from 2 to 200x. And speaking of their extremely low fees, they only have a 0.01% maker fee and a 0.02% taker fee. For some comparison on KuCoin, the standard fee is 0.1%, which is literally 10x higher. So the fees here on Prime XBT are literally 5 to 10 times lower than KuCoin, Binance, etc., truly making this a no-brainer. Be sure to use my referral link in the description below, and you could take advantage of a $100 bonus when you deposit at least $500. And I repeat, for international users, Prime XBT is an excellent option. So take advantage of it today. And by supporting our sponsors, you're helping to support the channel. I greatly appreciate it. Click the link in the description right down below and let's get this crypto, shall we? If you're new to the channel, be sure to smash the subscribe button to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every day like this. Also equally important to smash the like if you're gaining value out of today's content. It also helps out tremendously with a YouTube algorithm, so I greatly appreciate it. Today is pod episode 1565. I'm your host, JV, and today is February 29th, 2024, the last day of the month and it is getting lit. Shout out to one, two, three, ABCD. Appreciate your support, broski. Uh, Bitcoin's about to reclaim 62,000. We're only roughly another 7,000-ish away from all-time highs. Price discovery mode. Things are heating up. Getting very exciting. Happening around the quarter. Uh, we have record-breaking inflows from these ETFs and I'm going to be breaking all this stuff down for you. But first, let's kick it off with our market watch as we do each and every day, family. You can see Bitcoin still up 1% on the day, having a hell of a pump this week. We also have Ether trading above 3,400. Solana ripping up over 18%. I think that's because Bonk is up over 50%. XRP even up uh, 8%. Shout out to Godzilla Killa. We, we appreciate your support, family. Doge is on a tear. Many of the alts. Uh, Sheeb, 19%. All the meme coin alts are killing it, very interestingly enough. But anyways, checking out coinmarketcap.com, the current crypto market cap back on the rise at $2.29 trillion with $157 billion in volume for the past 24 hours with the Bitcoin dominance at 52.8% with the Ether dominance 
at 17.8%. And checking out the top 100 crypto gainers for the past 24 hours, Bonk leading the pack. Interesting, up 65% now in the day. Good Lord. And we also have it up 105% on the week with a one and a half billion market cap. Below that, meme coin Shiba Inu uh, with an 8 billion market cap, up 20% on the daily, followed by Solana, which has almost a $58 billion market cap. And this is the coin of choice by uh, Scam Bankman Freed. He was recently reported he was in prison, given investment advice to the prison guards, telling them to buy Solana. And if the prison guards would have listened to them, him, they'd be up 18% today. Very interesting how that works. But I just have this odd feeling that these prison guards don't have much money to invest. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> our weave is also up Filecoin Oasis BitTorrent, but I want to know which altcoins in particular family are you guys most bullish on during this potential alt season? I mean, we're witnessing alt season type of gains right now, just saying. But anyways, checking out the crypto bubbles for a visual perspective on the day. As you can see, virtually everything killing the game right now. Bonk 64%, EHEX 36%, HEX 35%, ROSE 15%, PLS 22%. Sol, 18%. And zooming out on the monthly, even more impressive gains. Uh, Pepe, 180%. Jasmine, 300%. Just good Lord. Worldcoin, 222%. That's why I say alt season family. And checking out the crypto greed and fear index. We're currently rated in 80 still in extreme greed. Yesterday was an 82 and last week a 74 in greed. And checking out the Bitcoin countdown halving clock. We have roughly 53 days yet to go until the halving, which is scheduled to take place on April 23rd. According to this countdown timer, obviously everyone's going to be a little different because it's based upon the blocks, but nonetheless, it's going to be around mid-April. If you're pretty excited for the Bitcoin halving, let me know. Also, where do you feel the Bitcoin price is likely to touch by this time in roughly 50 something days? Let me know. But anyways, fam, let's now dive into today's Bitcoin TA. Check out some of the charts. And this is actually interesting. The U.S. government moved almost a billion dollars worth of seized Bitcoin after Bitcoin smashed 60,000. Could it be another orchestrated attack? What are your thoughts? The U.S. government transferred 922 million worth of Bitcoin from two crypto wallets that held funds seized from Bitfinex back in 2016. The U.S. government's transfers occurred the same day Bitcoin breached 60,000. Coincidence? I think not. For the first time in over two years, what's the odds? Now, Bitcoin rose 5.5% in the 24 hours leading up to 9.45 p.m. to trade at 62.5. The world's first crypto is up over 20% in the past week. So congratulations to all the Bitcoin hodlers in the green. The first test transfer worth one Bitcoin, 60,000, or in the transfer occurred at 3.39 p.m. February 28th. And shortly after, the U.S. government labeled wallet sent a second transaction worth 2,800 Bitcoin, valued at 173 million. A third transaction worth 0 0.01 Bitcoin, 613 bucks, and a fourth, I guess, obviously, test transactions. And a fourth one worth 12,200 Bitcoin, which is 750 million, according to RCAM intelligence data, as you can see right here. The government seized the funds, as I shared earlier in 2016 from Bitfinex, when it was hacked for approximately 120,000 Bitcoin, worth over 7.4 billion at its current price. Interesting how that works. Hackers hack the honeypot, which is the exchange. Then the government hacks them. <laughs> and ends up with all the Bitcoin. It's crazy how that works. The transfers occurred a day after Ilya, the hacker who stole the laundered uh, $4.5 billion worth of Bitcoin from the exchange, appeared in a Washington court detailing how he pulled off one of the world's largest Bitcoin heists. Now, they reportedly told a jury February 27th that he had access to Bitfinex's system for several months while also hacking individual accounts at other exchanges like Coinbase, Kraken, according to the Bloomberg report. Also, his rapper wife, Heather Morgan, the greatest female MC to ever exist. <laughs> was arrested February 2022, and at the time, the U.S. government alleged they conspired to launder $4.5 billion and hack Bitcoin, of which the government seized $3.6 billion and the largest financial seizure in history. The government seized an additional almost $500 million worth of Bitcoin on August 3rd, 2022. So what does the government do with that seized Bitcoin. Apparently, they don't give it back to the people. Why are they still sitting on it? Now, him and his wife pleaded guilty to money laundering conspiracy in connection with the Bitfinex hack in August 2023. Amazon reportedly started making a movie on the Bitfinex money launderers. The script will reportedly be inspired by a 2022 article on the couple in the New York Times, branding them as Bitcoin's 
Bonnie and Clyde. Hey, there's only one Bonnie and Clyde to Bitcoin. That's Max and Stacy. Just saying, family. What's your thoughts on that? And what do you think the government is likely to do with all of the seized Bitcoin? Are they dumping it onto the market to try to suppress the price back under 60000 Let me know your thoughts. Shout out Lock Sky. Just gifted five more memberships to the channel. Like, whoa, greatly appreciate that, fam. Congratulations, all the new members, including Juanito, Chill Rainbow, Jeremy Ragsdale, Jaden Gardner, Sarav, Man vs. Machine. You've all been hooked up with the MicroStrategy membership of the channel on behalf of Lock Sky. Tomorrow, JV is going to be gifting 10 memberships, at least five. We may do five tomorrow and five on March 2nd. Every month, I like to gift 10 memberships myself. Uh, thank you. We appreciate that. So yeah, let's break down our next story of the day, family. Spot Bitcoin ETFs record new all-time high of 680 million as the Bitcoin bull run gathers pace. Let's go. Let's go, family. Spot Bitcoin ETFs in the US recordedly uh, recorded a cumulative daily inflow of 676 million, marking a new all-time high for the ecosystem. On February 28th, which was yesterday, the spot ETS ranked in, raked in nearly 680 mil worth of investments. And out of the 10 players approved by the US SEC, the daily inflows are attributed to five, which is iShares Bitcoin Trust at 612 million, ultimately BlackRock, Fidelity Wise Origin Bitcoin Fund at 245 million, and the Bitwise Bitcoin ETF at 9.9 million, followed by ARC 21 shares at 24 million, followed by Wisdom Tree at 2.2 million. As you can see, the Bitcoin ETF flows here on this table brought to you by Farside. Now, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust recorded 216 million in outflows, thus bringing down the total inflows from 893 million to 676 million. And since February 12th, the spot Bitcoin ETF market in the US recorded 7.4 billion in cumulative inflows. And in contrast, the market has lost over 7.8 billion due to the major outflow events from Grayscale and their GBTC product. As outlined here, the Bitcoin spot ETF total cumulative flow. Now, the iShares contribution to the Bitcoin ETFs in the US remains the highest at 7 billion as of yesterday. The total inflow into spot Bitcoin ETFs reached 7.4 billion to date, and that's pretty remarkable. Bullish crypto events in one region resonate across the globe. A recent survey featuring 2,100 respondents shows the Australian retail interest in Bitcoin has increased following January's approval of the spot Bitcoin ETFs in the United States. The Bitcoin sentiment, a metric that determines current investor sentiment based on trading events and market conditions in Australia, was boosted by 25% following the spot Bitcoin ETF approval, while adoption rates have also marginally increased this year in 2024. And speaking about the rise in positive investor sentiment, we had independent reserve CEO Adrian said that sentiment had demonstrably shifted. We have entered a phase of renewed optimism and growth. And while a third of the respondents showed interest in investing in Bitcoin for the long term, they were split on whether they would prefer to access Bitcoin via a crypto exchange or an ETF. Well, here's something I got to remind you guys. Bitcoin ETF is not the same as self custodied Bitcoin. One is confiscatable. The other is not. And of course, there's a lot of other differences as well. But I also want to share with you here breaking news. Justin, BlackRock spot Bitcoin ETF I bit to start trading in Brazil tomorrow. Brazil has one of the largest populations in the world, right? What's the exact number, family? Probably over 200 million people. Definitely the largest country in South America. So my people in Brazil, it's time. This is big, big news, and it doesn't stop there. Also, Wells Fargo and Bank of America's Merrill are Merrill Lynch offering spot Bitcoin ETFs to their wealth clients. Let's not forget, they came out when the Bitcoin ETFs were approved. They said, we're not offering these products. Now they're coming around. So will Vanguard, the second largest asset manager in the world, be next to capitulate and start offering ETFs to their clients? Because a lot of their clients are pretty pissed off at Vanguard and many Many of them are leaving in the droves and going to places like the BlackRock, iBit, and other ETF products, right? So let them phase out. Anyone not adopting Bitcoin will eventually go out of business, in my humble opinion. What are your thoughts? And I think it's a sign of the times. Everyone needs to accept Bitcoin, even enemies of Bitcoin, or get left 
behind. Now, let's discuss Bezos. Could this be Mr. 100? Is he a new Bitcoin millionaire in the club? Well, let's talk about it, shall we? Uh, the headline here reads, Bitcoin's billionaire club is Amazon's Jeff Bezos, the latest member. What are your thoughts uh, on this family? Uh, so this guy's post proactively asked if Jeff Bezos piling into Bitcoin right now, mingling with Michael Saylor, just liquidated eight and a half billion worth of Amazon stock sitting on cash. Unlikely, he is sharper than that. Bitcoin's price pump hinting at billionaire FOMO. What are your thoughts? Something's up. Highlighting Bezos' recent eight and a half billion liquidation of the Amazon stock and his dinner with Bitcoin advocate Michael Sailor. I'm not saying I'm number one. Uh, I'm sorry, I lied. As a potential evidence of the new venture, as he shares here in the tweet. And these are all great points, by the way. So I saw Max Kaiser retweeted it, and he said his source says yes. So Max Kaiser's source basically confirmed that it is Bezos piling up the Bitcoin right now, which means he could be in the Bitcoin billionaire club. But I want to know your thoughts, family. The dinner, detailed in a news report, said Bezos and his fiance, Lauren Sanders. Sanchez celebrate with a litany of celebrities and moguls, including Sailor, well-known Bitcoin bull. I'm number one, two, three, four, and five. This rendezvous has fueled speculation about Bezos' interest in digital currency, especially since Sailor is possibly Bitcoin's biggest and most eloquent proponent. There's no second best crypto asset. There's a crypto asset. It's called Bitcoin, right? I can see the conversation right now with Bezos. It'd go just like that. It's easy to imagine the Bitcoin was at least a brief topic of conversation given MicroStrategy's recent success, thanks to its massive Bitcoin holdings. The point is, if, if you have the superior asset, it's going up forever. Bezos, Bitpain, a figure of authority in the Bitcoin community, added to the speculation with tongue-in-cheek comment. Last time Bitcoin hit 0 0.06 million, Doquan was buying with fake Ponzi cash. This time, Jeff Bezos is buying with money he found in the couch on his yacht. This was complimented by Invest Answers. Shout out Invest Answers, no known, well-known analyst, who highlighted the creation of Bitcoin Wallet that saw a transaction of 26,200 Bitcoin at 51,000 each, suggesting it could belong to a high net worth individual like Jeff Bezos or the Meta founder, Mark Zuckerberg, or even a sovereign wealth fund, Qatar rings a bell, given the wallet was not associated with any ETFs, as Invest Answer shares here. Monster 1.3 billion Bitcoin buy, 26,200 Bitcoin at 51 Gs. Looks bullish, perhaps a sovereign wealth fund, Jeff Bezos, Zuck, or some other high net worth individual. P.S. This is not an ETF wallet. Pretty, pretty impressive. For Laura. Take all your time, figure out how to borrow more money to buy more Bitcoin. This the root of this speculation lies not just in the analyst's comments, but in Bezos' recent activities of the financial market. Bezos offloaded roughly 50 million Amazon shares in February, totaling $8.5 billion. This move comes after significant appreciation in the Amazon stock price, which surged more than 76% over the past year. And despite this massive sale, Bezos remains the largest shareholder in Amazon with a net worth soaring at over $190 billion. So What's a eight and a half billion dollar Bitcoin buy to someone like this? But here's what I do know. If he doesn't get into Bitcoin now, he's not going to be one of the richest men on the planet forever. That's for sure. The timing and scale of Bezos' stock sales juxtaposed with the anonymous yet colossal Bitcoin purchase have led to widespread speculation, you know, as we just mentioned. And uh, also, despite the wild speculation, there is no concrete evidence directly linking Bezos to the Bitcoin investments. So the community is left parsing for more clues. But as I mentioned a little earlier, according to Max, he says his sources have confirmed it. So take it for what it's worth. Let me know if you think if Bezos or potentially Zuck or Sovereign Wealth Fund just made this massive purchase because we did get confirmation it's not an ETF. But now let's discuss the 230% Bitcoin price rally this year. 2024, shall we? Headline reads, venture capitalist Dan Tapiero predicts Bitcoin will explode by up to 230% this year. Here's his outlook. The chief executive of investment firm 10T Holdings, which stands for 10 trillion, by the way, which is going to be the market cap of Bitcoin here very soon, just saying, could skyrocket by over 200% this year. In a new post, he shared Bitcoin could appreciate to between 150 and 200,000 this year, a gain of roughly 153 to 237% from its current price pump that motherfucker up. And according to Tapiero, once Bitcoin rises above 70,000 price discovery, which is slightly above the all-time high set in November of 2022, the, actually, I think that was set in November of 2021 family, right? The crypto king will 
skyrocket quickly to 90,000. It's a crypto asset. It's called Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin is up almost 100% in five months and not feeling frothy. Doubters still doubt everywhere, even a bit sedated. U.S. short rates are still 5%. U.S. dollar is strong. Bitcoin shocking acceleration up feels imminent. Now, amid the rally that has seen Bitcoin appreciate by approximately 50% from its 2024 low of 39.5 reached last month, Tapiero says that Coinbase could reach a price tag of 400, referring to their stock. Love this chart at 50, 60, 80, and 100. Now at around 190, it looks like it'll head up to 400. Rare that a chart still looks so phenomenal after such a big run. I'm curious, fam, any of you invested in coin stock? Holla. Coinbase doing an excellent job diversifying revenue streams. Last week, Tapiero said that he believes the Bitcoin's bull market is in the early phase, and Max Kaiser says it's only a uh, inning two, the second inning family, and there's nine innings total, meaning there's seven left. But back to Tabriero. I think we're in the second inning. Wow, he agrees with Max. I think we're in the second inning of the bull market. So I'd be much more concerned and think that there could be problems, potentially, if I felt we were in the seventh inning or the eighth inning. The bullish consensus at 75, 80%. I mean, that's an issue, but maybe it just means you have a short-term correction. We are just getting started here. Preach. And here's one of the tweets he shared. Surprised. Bitcoin up almost 100% in five months and not feeling frothy. The doubters are still everywhere. X even a bit sedate. U.S. short rate still 5%. USD strong. Bitcoin shocking acceleration up feels imminent. Break of 70,000 goes right to 90 Gs, baby. Then 150 to 200,000 per Bitcoin this year. So stack your biddies accordingly. Just saying. But anyways, what are your thoughts on Dan Tapiero's bullish price prediction family? Holla at your boy. But anyways, fam, still got a lot to cover. We discussed the 237% rally from Dan Tapiero. Now let's discuss a quarter million bitty price. That's right. And then we'll discuss the $400,000 target followed by some live Q&A. Welcome everyone just joining the stream. The headline reads, Bitcoin price can hit a quarter million sooner than expected. And this is according to the Bitwise CEO. That's right. Hunter Horsley, uh, CEO of Bitwise Management, shared an outlook on Bitcoin as the crypto price surged to $64,000 on Wednesday. That's right. And in addition, Spot Bitcoin ETFs have been recording record days this week, quoting him here from the interview. Bitcoin has been around for 15 years. It is going to accelerate now, not slow down. With Bitcoin ETFs, the entire tonnage of U.S. capital markets can easily invest for the first time. The market has grown massively. There are no new features to wait for. Price discovery underway. It can move quickly. Preach. And in another post, he emphasized Bitcoin is going to eat into gold's total addressable market faster than the people expect. Let me know if you agree or disagree with that sentiment. He also shared $250,000 Bitcoin could happen much sooner than most who have followed this space for years would imagine. Why? For 15 years, Bitcoin proved its merits, but was only accessible to some. Bitcoin ETS were Bitcoin's IPO moment. It is now available to any investor with the click of a button. The market has 10 x he opined. And while the executive did not specify the time frame for when he expects Bitcoin to reach a quarter million dollars per coin, Bitwise released its 10 crypto predictions for 2024 back in December, showing the firm expects Bitcoin to trade above 80,000 and set a new all-time high this year. And moreover, the asset manager said, within five years, we estimate a spot Bitcoin ETF can capture 1% of the 7.2 trillion US ETF market or 72 billion in assets under management. Now, the Bitwise Bitcoin Fund was amongst the 11 spot Bitcoin ETFs greenlighted by the US SEC January 10th. The fund began trading the next day, February 11th, along with the other nine spot ETFs. And earlier in the week, Carson Group approved four spot Bitcoin ETFs on its platform, including BitB. Many people share a bullish outlook for Bitcoin this week. Veteran trader Peter Brandt also shared some very bullish predictions we're going to touch upon here shortly, as well as Fund Strats Tom Lee anticipates Bitcoin hitting 150,000 this year. We also have the billionaire venture capitalist Tim Draper predicting a quarter million Bitcoin price action, followed by Kathy Wood of ARK Invest believing Bitcoin could reach as high as $2.3 million by the year 2030. What are your thoughts on that? bullish sentiment family. Make some noise. Let me know in the chat. Now let's discuss our feature story of the day. Crypto expert reveals why Bitcoin will rise to $400,000 per coin. Let's break this baby down. Welcome everyone joining the stream. Pump the likes to pump the stream. Greatly appreciate that. February was undoubtedly an amazing month for Bitcoin. 
and it's not over yet. With the crypto going on a surge of 39%, smashing 64,000, and notably, price history has shown this to be the second most profitable February in the history of Bitcoin and the most profitable February in 11 years. And you already know how dear I hold that number 11 to my heart, family. A lot of good omens here. Indeed, many market players have anticipated the price surge to continue throughout this year as the next Bitcoin halving approaches roughly 50 days out. And according to analysis from trading expert Peter Brandt, the price of Bitcoin can skyrocket to 400000 per coin after the next halving. Send it. Let me know if you agree with the legendary analysts. Bitcoin halvings, which slashes the mining rewards for miners into two, are known to trigger massive bull runs before and after they're completed. Indeed, the pre-halving bull run seems to have repeated itself as Bitcoin jumped over multiple resistance levels since the beginning of January and is now nearing its all-time high of 69,000, which it reached back in November on the 10th of 2021. Now, Brandt's analysis is majorly based on gains after past halving as a percentage of gains before halvings. So consequently, the analyst projects that the past price behavior into the future after April's halving is completed. So per his analysis, the Bitcoin current cycle reached its low November 2022 and is now at 75 bars. Now, if the bull trend extends 75 bars after the next halving, a price high of 150,000 is estimated to occur in early October 2025. I believe that would be the fourth quarter family. Uh, Brandt's analysis also pointed out three different scenarios that occurred after the last three halvings. After the first halving in 2012, Bitcoin went on a 5x gain as a percentage of its pre-halving gains. If the same were to happen after the 2024 halving, Bitcoin can reach 275,000 per coin. Send it. Now, similarly, in 2016's halving, saw Bitcoin going on an 8x gain from its pre-halving gains. If Bitcoin were to go on a similar 8x route, it can reach as high as 400,000 per coin. Now, doesn't 420 sound like a sexier target? What are your thoughts? Before the next market phase. And lastly, 2020's halving produced a modest 2x return from its pre-halving gains. A 2x repeat applied to a Bitcoin price of 50,000 with CS reaching 100,000 at the end of the current market phase. Now, as you know, there's a lot of speculation here. Anything is possible and there's no guarantees on what can happen with the Bitcoin price action. But here's one thing I do know. We're living in unprecedented times. Previous cycle, when we hit the November 10th all-time high in 2021 and clipped 69,000, there was zero institutional interest. In fact, it didn't even exist. Back in those days, Larry Fink was calling Bitcoin an index of money laundering. Now they have come full, cir full circle, uh, flipped around full 180, and they're embracing it. The banks are embracing it. The central banks want to be able to hold it and not have to use custodians like Coinbase. The ETFs are lit, uh, producing volume that's unprecedented. Uh, Bitcoin market cap is about to surpass silver family. We're at like 1.2 something trillion, and silver is just barely above that. We just surpassed past Meta, which is ultimately Facebook, as far as the market cap is concerned. And we start thinking about the total addressable market and how much money and capital truly exists in this world. Bitcoin is still just a pup, a baby, just getting started, kind of like our mascot, Nipsey, in the back, right? A lot of growing up to do. And so just imagine the difference this time with the institutions sucking uh, like an anteater, sucking up the ants. They're sucking up there's currently only 900 Bitcoin being issued per day from the miners. That's about to get chopped in half to 450. And there's thousands of Bitcoin being sucked up through the ETFs. That doesn't even consider the nation state adoption. I shared news breaking yesterday. Ed Snowden shared that there has been a nation state secretly acquiring Bitcoin and they're going to be announcing it soon. Which country might this be? What are your thoughts? And what do you think that's going to do to the price action? We also discussed breaking news today. Brazil is going to start offering their population ETF exposure, right? Through BlackRock and other vehicles, etc. Brazil is one of the largest, if not the largest population in South America, hundreds of millions of people, family. Argentina now has Javier Malay at the helm. What if they adopted Bitcoin as legal tender? What if Colombia, what if Panama, Suriname, right? Mexico, Canada, Russia, 
Iran, frickin' the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia? What if there is a sovereign wealth fund by the name of Qatar, and they really do convert some of their half a trillion sovereign wealth fund into Bitcoin? What about the other ETFs around the world? We discussed Brazil. We discussed the 11 in the United States. What about the one out of Hong Kong coming on the scene? And what about the one in El Salvador? What about nation state adoption in El Salvador? What about Jeff Bezos rubbing elbows with the Giga Chad? Yeah, I mean, what if Zuckerberg and Bezos both become Bitcoin billionaires here sooner than later? What if other countries make big announcements of adopting Bitcoin as a strategic hedge, right? And getting out of gold. What if Bitcoin flips gold as far as the market cap? And as Max predicts, we do hit a $780,000 target. What are your thoughts surrounding all of this? Personally, yeah, we didn't even touch upon BRICS, the de-dollarization of the dollar, right? The dollar is doomed. Bitcoin is the future. There's no comparable asset. There is no second best. It is the greatest hedge against inflation. It's a hedge against deflation. As Kathy Wood says, it's an insurance policy. It's incorruptible. There's a finite limited supply, 21 million. It's unconfiscatable. Therefore, it's priceless. You can't even put a number on Bitcoin, because you can't compare it to fiat. We do it just for fun and kicks and giggles at the end of the day. But the bigger picture, one Bitcoin will always be equivalent to one Bitcoin. That was true 15 years ago, and it will be true 150 years from now, family. So stack sats accordingly. Our lifelines, our future generations depend upon it. Because if it's up to the forces of evil or the powers that be, right, we'd all be poor eating bugs, right? And we would be controlled by programmable money called central bank digital currencies with expiration dates so that we can't save, that we're incentivized to spend it or it expires. And that could be attached to a social credit score. So if you're seeking freedom and sovereignty and the antidote to the CBDCs, look no further than BTCs, if you know what I mean. So there you have it, family. Let me know if you resonate with that rant and let me know your thoughts on where the Bitcoin price will likely be at the cycle peak for this particular cycle. 400,000, yay or nay. Holla at your boy.